endelea kuinyoa na kuipunguza orodha hiyo hadi kusalia wagombea watano peke yake ambao ndio huenda wakawa kwenye orodha ya ile itakayokuwa kwenye debe la kuelekea pale ikulu ya Nairobi baada ya uchaguzi wa mwaka 2022 wa Agosti 9 karibu tutakueleza yapi yamejiri kutoka katika ukumbi wa boma ambapo tume ya uchaguzi IBC inaendelea kuwa na kili na vile vile kuendelea kuwapiga msasa wote wale ambao wanataka kuania urais mwaka huu Agosti mimi naitwa Suleman Yeri tuandamani kwa takriban jisaji zima nikikupasha taarifa kutoka maeneo mbali mbali ya pembe hii ya taifa la Kenya tuanze na taarifa hiyo ya IBC ambapo tume ya uchaguzi nchini IBC imekataa kumwidhinisha Jimmy Wanjigi wa chama cha Safina kugombea kiti cha rais katika uchaguzi mkuu wa mwezi Agosti baada ya Wanjigi kushindwa kuwasilisha nakala ya cheti chake cha kufuzu katika chuo kikuu kwa mujibu wa mwenyekiti wa IBC wa Fula Chebukati Wanjigi kadhalika alishindwa kuwasilisha idadi inayohitajika ya sahihi za ofisi wake baada ya hatua hiyo ya IBC Wanjigi amesisitiza kuwa ametimiza matakwa yote ya tume hiyo ikiwemo ku Thank you all of you for being here. Let me say very clearly, I think enough has been talked about uh, in relation to why we are being rejected. And I want to assure Kenyans, especially my supporters, that we have qualified according to the constitutional laws of this land in full. We have finished our university education and completed successfully we submitted more than 25 counties of signatures and in it we also attached our ids we have been here on a pre-qualification exercise pre-nomination exercise and during that exercise up until saturday we were told everything that we have presented is okay but somewhere there seems to have been a decision made that we must find or they must find any excuse to keep us out. I want to inform the commission that we know what's going on. We know exactly what is going on. And unfortunately this time you will not get away with it. There seems to be a very clear decision that there are people who must not be on the ballot. And I am one of them. I want to assure Kenyans that I will be on the ballot for the August 9th general election. I will be on the ballot. Notwithstanding the kind of shenanigans you are seeing here. Because Kenyans are faced with this choice. We are faced with an economic question. A question that is beleaguering our nation. A question created by the very architects who are trying to keep us out of this race. Ten years ago, a virus called Uhuruto was born to this nation. It has plagued us. Five years after that, it became Jubilee. And today, it has mutated into Azimio and Kenya Kwanza. This virus inherited a country that had a 38% poverty, 38 poverty rate. 38 out of every 100 Kenyans 10 years ago could not find food. Within five years, that number had turned to 53 of every 100 Kenyans not having food in their belly. Today, it is 63. This has plagued us like the virus called Corona. It is in every single one of our homes and it is presenting itself as a new mutant. We must not allow it to continue. We must be the vaccine. And that vaccination starts today. And we shall vaccinate this IBC in totality. With all the discrimination it has tried to do, we shall vaccinate it away because it has become part of the virus. Let me assure you, we will be on the ballot August 9th, Asante Nisan. There is what you ligi ya kielezea ghadhabu yake baada ya kuweza kutemwa na IBC kutokana na kutofutimiza matakwa kadha wa kadha tukiachana taarifa hiyo nataka tuelekee kule katika uwanja wa nyaya ambapo mgombea wa kiti cha urais kwa tikiti ya chama cha muungano wa azimio la umoja Raila Odinga anatarajiwa kuzindua manifesto yake katika hafla itakayoandaliwa katika uwanja wa kitaifa wa nyayo jioni hii 
Uzinduzi huo na jiri siku moja tu baada Raila kuidhinishwa kugombea kiti hicho katika uchaguzi mkuu wa mwezi Agosti tunajiunga na mwandishi wetu Duncan Hayemba ambaye anafuatilia uzinduzi huo. Hayemba kipi kinajiri sasa hizi? Naam, asante sana mwenzangu Salema Nieri. Hapa katika uga ama uchanjaa wa kitaifa wa nyayo ni kwamba maandalizi yanaendelea kupamba moto. Kumbuka kwamba uh, ratiba kamili ilikuwa imeonyesha kwamba majira ya saa kumi na moja unusu uh, ndio shughuli zitakuwa zinaanza ikiwa ni matumbuizo hapa na pale. Lakini ratiba haswa kamili tumeweza kuelezwa dakika chache zilizopita kwamba itaanza mwendo wa saa moja jioni. Bila shaka huenda ni mbinu ambayo wanaazimia wameweza kutumia ya kuona kwamba watakapokuwa wanazindua manifesto yao basi mkenya yote atakuwa amesha atulia nyumbani kwake ama kule anakoishi iwapo atakuwa nafatilia kwenye redio basi ataweza kuwasikia iwapo atakuwa machote kwenye runinga basi ataweza kuwafata pengine ndio maana kwamba wameweza kutafuta mbinu ambayo watakuwa nazungumza na wakenya wakati huo wa jioni kwa hivyo kwa hivi sasa ni maandalizi tu ambayo atakuwa nazidi lakini ni siku ambayo ina uzito sana manake kwa wengi wanasema kwamba uh, ni kipindi cha lala salama dakika baada ya kucheza uh, tuseme zile uh, dakika tisini wapo unafatilia mambo ya soka dakika tisini zilisha kamilika kwa Raila Odinga muda wa ziada pia ukakamilika na sasa huenda ni kipindi cha penalti ambazo sasa ziko na uweza kulinganisha pengine ni penalti ya mwisho ambayo asipogonga ndipo basi huenda mambo uh, yatasalia kuwa historia mambo yalivyokuwa kwa hivyo ni uchaguzi ambao Raila Odinga ambaye sasa ni mgombeaji rasmi katika uchaguzi huu baada ya kuidhinishwa hapo jana na tume ya IEBC atakuwa anaichukulia kwa uzito zaidi utakumbuka kwamba mbali na manifesto ambayo anaweza kuwa anazindua dakika chache zinazofuata ama katika muda masaa mawili yajayo Raila Odinga ameweza kufanya mabadiliko mufti katika kikosi chake ameweza kubadilisha ambaye uh, watakuwa na uh, uh, shirikiana naye katika mashambulizi haya ya kisiasa baada ya kutamba na msali ya mdavadi mwaka mbili na saba wakaambulia kando baada ya kutamba na kalonzo msioka mwaka elfu mbili kuminatatu mwaka elfu mbili na kuminasaba wakaeza kugonga nje sasa ameza kuleta nguvu mpe kiwanjani matha karua ambaye si mgeni katika maswala ya kipute cha urais manake mwaka mwaka elfu mbili kuminatatu wawili wao pia waligombea lakini hakuna liefa nikiwa kwa hivyo odinga ameza kufanya mabadiliko thabiti kabisa na hivi leo sasa na po zindua manifesto itakuwa vile vile ni ya umuhimu zaidi lakini kwa mengi zaidi pengine e, tusiseme tusiandike na mate ili hali wino upo mtaweza kuzungumza na mmoja wanachama ambaye ni mwanachama wa muungano wa azimio la umoja na chama cha UDP ambaye pia ni mwanda mwanahabari mwana tajika lakini sasa amevaa kofia ya wanasiasa David Ohito ambaye anawania kiti cha, cha pamoja na mwenzake Nicholas Gumbo wanawinda kiti cha ugavana kule uh, Ugenya uh, sia ya kumradhi lakini nataka nimuulize swali kama hili manake umekuwa mwanahabari wa tajriba ya miaka mingi uzinduzi huu tukizungumza kama mwanahabari una umuhimu ipi sana katika azma ya Raila Odinga wakati huu Asante sana wanahaemba kuni, uh, katika runinga ya KTN hapa Um, maana kubwa ya uzinduzi wa manifesto ya leo ni tunaenda kujua ni sera zipi uh, kiongozi uh, right honorable Raila Odinga ataonyesha wa Kenya ile mipango na miradi ya nazo kuinua Kenya kutoka pali iko pali imetawacho na rais uh, anayestaafu hapo August uhuru wa Kenyatta na pia tujue ni kina nani wale vigogo wa siasa tumeona kina Mata Karua tumeona kina Kalonzo wako pale kuna Ali Roba kutoka Mandera wako kule na vyama karibu na sita ambayo ni wanachama cha Azimio sasa tunatarajia leo tutatetemesha nchi na tuwaonyeshe wana raia ni sehemu gani Kenya inaelekea Pengine kuna yule atasema kwamba mwaka elfu mbili na saba Odinga alitetemesha na manifesto mwaka elfu mbili kuminatatu vile vile elfu mbili kuminasaba katika manifesto hii na ninarejelea manake umeandika tarifa za siyasa kwa muda mrefu umekua muhariri maswala hao umeapitia kwa azma hii ya sasa mbali na manifesto ambayo unasema itatetemesha uzito zaidi kwa Raila Odinga na manifesto jioni ya leo atakapokuwa na zungumza na wakenya ndani na nje ya nchi ni upi moja kwanza shida ya Kenya ni ufisadi 
na Raila Odinga wamekuwa mstari wa mbele kupigana na ufisadi kabisa na kiungana na Bi Martha Karua tunajua uh, mambo ya ufisadi itakomeshwa kabisa ama itarudishwa chini mno akichukua uongozi ya pili ni ile baba care ambayo ni eh, mpango maalum ya afya uh, ya kusaidia wananchi wote wapate uh, matibabu za kisasa katika mahospitali za kitaifa na pia kuna ile pesa mfukoni mfukoni ambayo ni ki, anasema wale vijana waona ajira watapewa shilingi elfu sita kila mwezi ili wajisaidie nayo nadhani hizo ni baadhi za zile mipango kambambe sana uh, Raila Odinga amazitoa mbeleni hapo. Na mwisho kabisa ili niweze kukupa nafasi uweze kuingia na kuketi. Uh, unapoangalia uh, hatua ya kubadilisha mgombea mwenza wakati huu baada ya kutamba na wanasiasa wa kiume. Sasa ameweza kumleta mwanasiasa wa kike ambaye mbali na rekodi yao kwamba walipigania uh, ujio wa mfumo wa demokrasia vya mavingi. Je kuwa na Martha Karua kenye tiketi hii kuna leta tasura ipi mbali na swala kwamba walipigania masuala ya demokrasia uh, kumteua Mbi Martha Karua huyo ni shujaa wa demokrasia nchini na pia katika taifa za Afrika na nchi nzima wale wote wamekuwa wakitizama historia ya Martha Karua wanajua ni mwanadada ambaye si mchezo kabisa anasimama kwa ukweli mara nyingine na pia anaelewa mambo ya katiba kabisa na hiyo itasaidia serikali ya Raila Odinga kuendesha biashara kwa njia ya inatakikana na kulingana na katiba na, uh, na pia vipengele za uh, sheria za nchi Asante sana pengine la ziada si haya mambo yanakwenda vipi eneo la uh, kwa mtizamo wako uh, baada ya kupata kura pengine sasa kuungwa mkono katika himaya ambayo hajawahi pata ungwaji kura katika azma yake tunazungumzia eneo la katikati mwa nchi ukipenda mlima Kenya je kuobeshiri wako unaona wakati huu pengine asilimia ya kura ama za, za Raila Odinga huenda zikakuwa ngapi zitasalia pale zitapanda kwa kiwango kipi ama mambo yatakuwa vipi kama mdadisi wa kisiasa mimi naweza kusema bila utatishi kwa atapata zaidi ya sitini na moja uh, juu ya mia. Sababu yenyewe ikiwa ni ipi? Unajua amewahi kuunga wa Kenya wengi sana. Ukiona ndugu Kalonzo Msioko yuko kule na ameleta kura za ukambani. Kuna ngilu pale anazindilia zile kura za ukambani. Kuna Ali Roba analeta kura 1.3 million kutoka kule juu na mwenzake Muhammad Ali kutoka Marsabit Isiolo ziko under lock. Sia ya kule tunafanya kazi kama UDM na tutahakikisha sia ya county tumempatia baba 99 juu ya mia ili tuingie pale. Na sina tatizo hata kidogo kuwa Raila atakuwa rais mnamo tarehe kumi na moja hapo uh, EIBC kitangaza rais. Naam asante sana basi huyo ni David Ohito ambaye anawania pamoja na Nicholas Gumbo akiti katika himaya ama nyumbani kwa Raila Odinga a, kaunti ya Siaya manake wanawinda kiti cha ugavana lakini mwaniaji wa azimio kwenye tiketi hiyo ni James Orengo katika chama cha ODM kwa hivyo hivyo ndivyo mambo yanasonga lakini kwa haraka haraka yeri kabla nirejee kwako ni kwamba tumeweza kusikia dalili kwamba katika manifesto yake mwendo wa saa moja basi Raila Odinga atakuwa anaelezea wa Kenya maagano yake 13 ukipenda 13 covenant with Kenyans manake atakuwa na wasimulia ma maagano 13 mbali na maagano hayo tunaelezwa kwamba kuna ma, uh, ahadi ambazo anatoa za siku zake mia moja za kwanza vile vile anasema atakaposhika hatamu iwapo ataweza kuibuka mshindi basi ataweza kutekeleza mambo mas, maswala kadha wa kadha katika siku zake mia moja za kwanza ahadi ya siku mia moja za kwanza si ingeni manake mwaka mbili na mbili wakiwa katika muungano wa NAC waliweza kuahidi katiba katika siku mia moja hiyo ilibaki uh, agano tu ilibaki ahadi lakini yeye amesema kwamba katika siku zake mia moja za kwanza kuna mambo takriban uh, ambaye ameweza kuratibisha kumi hivi kwa hivyo amejipanga sawa sawa kama nake masuala ya ufufuzi wa uchumi uh, masuala ya jamii uh, uongozi bora na mambo mengi kadhaa ambayo ameweza kuratibisha kisha ana, ana, ana hadi zake kumi ambazo anaziita 
azimio zake ama maazimio yake kumi kwa wakenya mambo na ugatuzi jitihada kwa kina mama ukulima viwanda mambo kadha wakadha lakini tutaweza tu kusubiri tuweze kusikia hapo itakapogonga saa moja ni yapi ambayo rasmi yatakuwa yanaweza kupakuliwa wakenya yeri Asante sana ni mwanahabari huyo Duncan Hayemba ambaye anazidi kufuatilia akisema kwamba kuna maagano matatu ambayo huenda ndio yatatangazwa rasmi na Raila Odinga kwamba hayo ndio atatekeleza na pia katika siku mia moja za kwanza za kuwa uongozini atafanya nini tutasubiri kuona kuanzia mwendo wa saa moja usiku tukia tena na siasa tuangazie masuala ya usalama ambapo waziri wa usalama wa ndani Fred Matiangi amesema kwa zaidi ya bunduki mbili na risasi elfu tatu zimepokonywa wakazo eneo la Marsabit katika operesheni ya kudumisha amani inayoendelea katika eneo hilo Matiangi yuko katika kaunti hiyo kutathmini juhudi za kulinda amani baada ya eneo hilo kushuhudia visa vingi vya mauaji ya raia wasokuwa na hatia ziara hiyo ya Matiangi inajiri wiki moja baada ya kuongeza amri ya kutotoka nje nyakati za usiku kwa siku thelathini zaidi tunajiunga na mwandishi wetu Alan Ochanda aliyepo huko Marsabit lakini kwanza kabla ya kuungana na Ochanda kwa kwanza tumsikilize Matiangi alisema nini And people can go on to do what they need to do. And, and uh, the, the truth of the matter also is that the, this conflict and these challenges here have nothing to do with the ordinary wananchi per se. A bit of it is uh, politically motivated. A bit of it is uh, uh, a challenge caused by the proximity to the border and uh, some of the uh, things that we have allowed to happen over a long period of time so we will do we will adopt an all of the above approach we are going to do intensified screening uh, you know of people and, and and individuals who move around where they are doing business or whatever they are doing to ensure that we don't have you know aliens and wrong people around here uh, we will continue to have a communal engagement with members of the the public we are going to intensify our workings with the Interfaith Council to ensure that community leaders are involved in the decisions that we make. But most importantly, we have this morning taken a decision to do a 100% review of the administrative infrastructure in Marsabit. Because na viongozi wa Kenya kwanza kaunti ya Wajea wamewasihi wakazi wa kaunti hiyo kujitokeza kwa wingi na kuhudhuria mkutano wa biashara ulioandaliwa katika kaunti hiyo kabla ya ziara ya naibu rais William Ruto katika eneo hilo wakizungumza katika hafla nyingine baada ya kuidhinishwa na IBC mgombea wa ANC August Shah na yule wa UDA Ahmed Ali Mukhtar wamesema mfumo wa bottom up ndio suluhu kwa changamoto za uchumi zinazokumba wananchi hasa katika eneo la mashariki uh, kaskazini mashariki mwa Kenya Uh, the bottom up approach is very essential to the communities that we live in where poverty and uh, um, uh, low incomes is a big problem so on that basis we would like to take this opportunity to welcome his excellency uh, the next president the fifth president of the republic of kenya uh, the kenya kwanza candidate for the presidency william samoy ruto to the county of wajia he want to listen to those in the informal sector he want to listen to the herders and uh, you know herds men and herds women he want to listen to the educationists he want to listen to those in the health sector he want to listen to the normal wananchi and they hear from them the needs uh, of this county so i appeal to them also to come in their numbers and uh, tell the expected president of this uh, republic uh, what uh, the needs are we will also be there we will also be talking on their behalf but he also wants to hear from uh, them na naibu rais William Ruto amezindua kundi la kina mama wa chama chake watakaoongoza juhudi za kutafuta kura katika azma yake ya kugombea kiti cha urais mwezi agosti kundi hilo la akina mama katika chama cha UDA linalenga kuwa rai akina mama kumpigia mkura Ruto kwa, kwa mwezi agosti Ruto anatarajiwa kuzindua manifesto yake tarehe 30 mwezi huu
say that tonight marks the beginning of a journey for the Kenyan woman. We are coming out to the counties, to the regions, and we are coming to partner together with you. We will walk this journey together. If you look at how UDA is structured, it's structured with women in mind. We will go to the grassroots, down to the grassroots, and mobilize women around the Women Congress. You know, we want to occupy even the chairman of UDA. We want to occupy the Secretary General's office. We want to occupy the treasurer position so that we can be able to make the money go to where women programs are. I want to commit as the party leader of UDA that women will, will not be there to be seen. They will be there to be heard and they will be there to lead. This election is about the economy and the face of that economic conversation is that great woman called Mama Boga. <clears throat> In fact, somebody was telling me, maybe our competitors confused Mama Boga for Mama Moja. <laughs> but, uh, but that's what it is. This election is about the economy and the face of our economy is the hard working, early rising, sleeping late Mamamboga who tries to make ends meet. Na kulikuwa na sintofahamu katika chuo kikuu cha Moi baada ya kundi moja la vijana kujitosa shuleni humo kwa madai kwamba mbunge wa Lugari Ayub Savula hakufuata taratibu mahsusi katika kuhafili kwenye daraja la uzamili ila akizungumza shuleni humo mbunge huyo ambaye ni mgombea mwenza wa Fernandez Baranza anayetafuta kiti cha ugavana katika kaunti ya Kakamega kupitia azimio la umoja amesema kwamba hayo madai ni njama ya wapinzani wake kutaka kumpaka tope na boda boda tutapaki tu kwa maskini kwa sababu hatuna yeah. hatuna pesa alafu wenye pesa watakuja hapa tu they just chip in they pay and they get out with a certificate so it is very shameful na tunakata tunaikemea sana kama wana boda boda tumekata tumekata no. I'm graduate of environmental science from university of Eldoret what i only want to stress is safula graduated in 10 december 2010 and in 20 days later is when he's given a transcript of masters in moyo university we will want to condemn that as much as possible that we need to see credible process of education in our country and entire universities that let this not be the leeway of some leaders to cleanse into power and that is why we are realizing of issues of bad governance in the country it is as a result of such incidences we are asking for fairness we are asking for clear processes when it comes to education system in this country and we are asking that uh, let the universities follow the right procedure to enroll students, not based on how you can pay money or how you can do this. We need education system that favors both poor and the rich in this country. Thank you. Now, Mkotan... Na sasa tumskilize Savula kijitetea baada vinyana hao kutoa madai yao. Na mtuelekea kule katika county ya Samburu ambapo mkutano ulojumuisha wazee viongozi wa Moran na maafisa wa serikali umeandaliwa katika county hiyo ya Samburu ili kutuliza mihemko inayoendelea kupanda na ku kudumisha amani miongoni mwa jamii ya Samburu na Pokot. Afisa mkuu wa shirika la PeaceNet Kubai Kahara amesema kuwa jamii hizo mbili zimekuwa zikizozana kwa sababu ya mifugo. Kubai amesema kuwa jamii zote mbili zimekubali kuwa hazita waficha wale wachache ambao wanaendeleza uhalifu huo miongoni mwao. Aidha watu wa jamii zote mbili wanaunga mkono mikakati itakayofanikisha kupatikana kwa amani na kuvumiliana. Kwa zee ya mjabu 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 Kwa zee ya mjabu
wenye wamekuwa na shida na kuzozana kuhusu mifugo tukaleta officials wa kutoka national government e, tukaleta elders tukaleta leaders of uh, warani with a goal of trying to seek uh, uh, to, pro to provide a platform yenye wanaweza jadiliana and they can look for a solution to the conflict which is imagine because if you do not stop it at this point it may it may grow bigger and uh, we are very glad because one uh, we had a very good turnout uh, across all the representatives uh, all the participants that we had uh, intended to focus on and importantly we had a very frank dialogue uh, uh, b between uh, the communities uh, despite the challenges of may maybe uh, the, the language barrier wazee kutoka shamburu na wazee kutoka pokot tumeongea mambo mengi tumeelewana tutamaliza hiyo mambo ya uwizi ya ngombe ambayo inaleta vurugu kama ngombe imepotea kwa bahati mbaya tutakuwa tunafuata sisi pamoja pokot pamoja na wasitua wa samburu na mimi nafurahia sana amani kwa sababu bila amani hata kuisi itakuwa shida na hata maendeleo hatutafanya na hata kuweka watoto shule hatutaweza kwa hivyo nafurahia amani sana na tunasema tudumishe amani na tunaenda kuupiria watu wetu mambo ya amani ili amani ikae idumu milele kwa hapa malaso na watu wetu wa Samburu na mtokitoka kule Samburu tupate pumziko fupi tukirudi tutakuja kuangazia taarifa nyinginezo ambazo zinagonga vichwa vya habari usiende mbali mtazamaji